One thing I do that I find a lot of bass players don't think about is I actually, I rarely practice with an amp okay. at home with electric bass. I just play acoustically and just on a couch. Mm -hmm. And what that does is that means that you're learning how to draw a sound out of the instrument as opposed to kind of having the amp turn up and not putting enough physical effort into it. To so get the strings to move. Yeah, it makes, yeah. A big, it makes a big difference. Would you say that's from your upright plane? Uh, I, double bass, yeah. Uh, I used to do that before I started mm. playing because I didn't start playing acoustic bass until I was probably quite old, really. Oh, okay. um, but uh, it's definitely affects having acoustic bass yeah. in your arsenal and learning how to draw a sound from an acoustic yeah, instrument. Yeah. Can you show us the difference just quickly? I don't know if we're going to capture that. You might not hear the sound. Oh, Maybe no. this will pick it up. But like if I took something like a bark cello suite, I would be at home. But Right? Um, so the difference, the little, the thing I find, especially when I'm teaching, is a student might be playing something like that, mm -hmm. and then they'll be sounding like this. Right? And then I'll say, give me the bass, and we don't touch anything, don't touch it, and I'll be... A... Yeah, I mean, I'm not playing loud, I'm drawing a sound and then I can back off. But that's also where the clarity is coming mm -hmm. through when we were talking about the, the mix, sure. cutting through the mix. That's part of it, right? That's, that's yeah. a big part of it. Yeah, and letting the amp just amplify what you're that's doing. That's right, yeah. As someone famous said, don't, you play the amp, don't let the amp play you. Right. Yeah. Paul, what sort of variations can you get from like your Yamaha bass, your 7358? This one, okay, if, yeah. if I'm in, in active mode, I mean obviously you've got your pickup, so if I'm on my back pickup, you know, that's going to be a, a barking mid-range kind of cutting through, mm -hmm. then I can go to the, the, the between the two pickups. Uh, that's going to be, uh, yeah, it's, that's kind of a more mellow sound. Then straight to the front, which is the uh, P pickup. There's kind of like a lot of variation there. Mm -hmm. And then also you've got your tone controls here with your mids, your bass, and uh, and your treble. treble. Mm -hmm. Do you touch those much during the show? Do you uh, sort of start with a, a benchmark really, and, and uh, work from a, there? A, a, Probably the one I once I set the bass, I usually leave it. I might mess with the treble a little bit, mm -hmm. just if it's a little kind of has to be. If I'm playing the, like electric bass with strings or something like that, and you want to kind of blend in, sure. I want to kind of cut. I probably might cut that back so it's like. I don't want to be. It's too harsh, right? So I might be. That's a good point. Um, in an orchestra setting with yeah. many, many players, many instruments, um, I guess it's really important to understand that who you're playing with. Like if you're playing in a three-piece rock band or you're playing in a you know, multi-timbral orchestra, yeah, how does that change the way you approach Our, your yeah, sound? Absolutely. Like a, if I took, say if I was like a, playing even like a more jazz kind of setting or something like that, if I was, uh, this is my my stock standard setup. I might be here. Okay, so then if I did kind of play the same thing and I was going to this back pickup. It's just going to kill it. What about your bass setup? How do you approach setting up a bass for yourself, for your playing? Uh, well, I mean, it's really important to get the bass set up well. 
that's the kind of relationship between the getting all in tune with the harmonics mm -hmm. and the relief on the neck and the, the height of the strings. So, I mean, for instance, it was great to be able to come in, into the store when I bought this bass and we spent, I think, about an hour, mm -hmm. two, maybe yeah. an hour and a half. Restring and set up, yep. Yeah, because I'm pretty fussy and I, I have the, the strings fairly high, so we kind of raise the strings. And then I like also to, I need it to have the instrument very clean. I don't like any fret buzz. Mm -hmm. That's another great thing about Yamaha. Their fret work and their consistency from bass to bass is usually really, really happening. But you know, the ability to come into, into the store and bring it to someone like you who's into it yeah. and cares. Thank you. Uh, that makes a big difference, as, as opposed to just kind of ordering something online and then it, it comes to you. And then, so building that relationship with the store has been great. That's why I yeah. keep coming back here. Great, yeah, great to hear. Years. And we like yeah. having you here yeah. as well, yeah. Thank you. A wealth of experience, knowledge, um, not only today through our little chat that we've had, but all the times you come in and and we sort of talk about different things and yeah, even little snippets are really helpful for all of us. Yeah, yeah. it's great. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate it. Yeah.